original super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. Hope you are doing very, very well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition. Traditional food prep and storage, traditional cooking, and of course, traditional artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. All right, the consumption of dairy products has been a mainstay for as long as mankind has been able to capture and milk animals of all kinds. You got sheep, sheeps, <laughs> sheep, goats, cows, bison, water buffalo, donkeys, horses, yes, mares milk, and all are still milked to this day. There may be others, who knows? Um these are, those are the ones of which I am aware. I want to talk about this tradition that has helped our species thrive and develop over the centuries and millennia. Consuming dairy products. But first, but first, I want to take that blessed moment to say welcome to all the new listeners. And welcome back to you veteran homestead loving regulars who stop by the homestead every week. I appreciate you all so much, and I'm so excited to share with you what's going on in our neck of the woods this week. So I'll have some homestead life updates, just a few, because I'm going to talk mostly about why we consume dairy products. And then we'll have a traditional kefir recipe. All right, you ready for that? All right, let's talk about the homestead life. Oh my gosh. Is it hot where you are? Phew. We've been experiencing a real heat wave here. Temperatures that are normal for like late July and August. And, you know, thank goodness, we'll be back to normal for the next week or so. Highs in the 70s and maybe the uh, highs in the high 70s and the low 80s. Like today is great. I think it, it probably got up to maybe 79 today. You know, the 90 degree days drained the energy right out of me. I expect that in the middle of summer. But but come on, it's still three weeks until the summer solstice. <laughs> now let's talk about the garden and the orchard. You know, speaking of draining energy, the garden's burning up. Well, I will, it would be if we weren't diligently watering every day. And the orchard too. And the weeds are still progressively taking over this time of year. I am really pressed for time. Milking twice a day, making cheese, going to the farmer's market, on and on and on. And uh, as I've said before, the garden gets pushed down the list of priorities. So the weeds are doing great. They're getting watered too. (laughs) Uh, This too shall change in the future. Uh, It takes a lot to get a business off the ground. uh, But once we're more established, we can let up a little bit, I think. And once the creamery is built, Scott will have more time to help out with a lot of those tasks as well. Speaking of the creamery, we have a little progress that's been made uh, on it this week after a couple, three weeks of being stalled. Um, it's still creeping along compared to the plan that Scott originally made, you know. but it is what it is, and we persevere. It's the journey that is important. It's the system that we're setting in place that is important. Goals come and go, but the system remains. So... Uh, we just we just keep going on with it. We're going to build that creamery. Now, as far as the animals go, um, we still have a couple of baby bulls for sale. I don't know if I mentioned that before. But anyway, we still have a couple of them. Uh, and if you're looking to improve uh, the beef or dairy genetics of your herd, the Normandy cow is a good bet. Uh, visit our website, www.peacefulheartfarm.com. Go to the contact page. Let us know of your interest. Uh, We also have a one-year-old and a proven two-year-old bull that are available. Um, As we move towards AI, artificial insemination, for uh, we have a very small herd. Um, We really don't need bulls. 
it's just one less thing to keep up with. So we're getting rid of all of our bulls. Let us know if you'd like to improve the genetics of your line. They have great beef genetics. Uh, we have ground beef on sale, $6 for one pound, $250 for 50 pounds, and $500 for 100 pounds. How about that? We also have a few, very few, lambs available. Again, go to the website. Let us know of your interest in a whole uh, or half lamb. $380 for a whole lamb, $200 for a half. www.peacefulheartfarm.com All right. So that's it for the homestead updates. Let's get on to the topic at hand. Why we consume dairy products. And I'm going to talk about why we consume dairy products. It's the benefits. Our dairy products come straight from our grass-fed cows with no alteration from the live state of the milk. And it's all about the nutrition. Traditional foods raised using traditional methods produces that traditional robust health of days gone by. And I'm going to get to the specific health benefits in a moment. But let's talk about uh, maybe you've been told that drinking raw milk is dangerous. Um, you'll be surprised to know that you've been misled. The truth about raw milk? Well, an extensive look into research and claims made by the FDA and the CDC related to raw milk being dangerous have been found to be completely unwarranted. It actually benefits your body in many ways. And although it might have earned a reputation among some for being dangerous, you shouldn't miss out on all this amazing superfood has to offer because raw milk benefits are truly impressive. And when handled correctly, it is perfectly safe. So what is raw milk exactly? It's milk that comes from grass-fed cows. It's unpasteurized and unhomogenized. This means that raw milk contains all of its natural enzymes, fatty acids, vitamins, and minerals, making it what many refer to as a, quote, complete food. Eggs fall into the, quote, complete food category also. Everything needed for growth and health is contained in the package. No need for sterilization or added sugar. But can't raw milk cause problems due to the risk of consuming bacteria? Well, the risk of this happening is very, very low. In fact, according to medical researcher Dr. Ted Beals, MD, you are 35,000 times more likely to get sick from other foods than you are from raw milk. Think about all those recalls. It's beef, it's lettuce, and so on. Pasteurized milk sometimes. And there's a reference in the show notes to uh, Dr. Beals research. So you can get sick from consuming any food, but your real, your risk of illness from raw milk is actually quite small. The CDC reports that there are an estimated 48 million foodborne illnesses diagnosed each year. Yes, you heard that right. 48 million foodborne illnesses. Now of these 48 million illnesses, only about 42 each year are due to consumption of fresh, unprocessed raw milk. 42. That's 0.0005%. I know it's demonized incredibly everywhere. And everyone's horrified about the idea that, oh, you're going to be content. But out of 48 million illnesses, 42, 42, and that's from the CDC. So they, they contradict their own propaganda. Um, Dr. Chris Kesser did a thorough investigation to get the true impact of raw milk illness and death. Um, I mean, the CDC makes it sound inevitable. 
He found that your chances of becoming hospitalized from a bacterial illness caused by raw milk is three times less than your chance of dying in a plane crash. A lot of people don't even fly. I haven't flown in years. The statistics indicate that most accusations and concerns over raw milk have been overstated. And because of that, its health benefits continue to be underrated because they keep the fear mongering going. But raw milk benefits are numerous and can help address a large number of nutritional deficiencies that millions of people, especially those eating the standard American diet, are currently experiencing. For instance, raw milk benefits allergies and skin all while containing beneficial nutrients available in a living product. Let me talk about five benefits of raw milk. Number one, reduced allergies. Studies now suggest that children who drink raw milk are 50% less likely to develop allergies and 41% less likely to develop asthma compared to children who don't. Those are impressive numbers. A study published in the Journal of Allergy and Clinical Immunology involved 8,000 children with various diets, and one of the conclusions that researchers made was that by drinking raw milk, children experienced, quote, natural immunizing effects. And uh, the reference will be in the show notes. As documented on the realmilk.com website, many other studies carried out over the past century have shown that uh, raw milk benefits and supports children's growth and development in other ways too. Um, Increased immunity against infections, dental health is boosted, support for skeletal growth. You know, again, reference references in the show notes. You might be wondering how can raw milk reduce allergies and Isn't dairy actually tied to high rates of intolerance or sensitivities? Well, nutrients like probiotics, vitamin D, and immunoglobulins or antibodies found in raw milk naturally boost the immune system and reduce the risk of allergies in both children and and adults. The key there is it needs to be the living product. Enzymes found in raw milk help with digestion, but these enzymes are destroyed during pasteurization. So without those enzymes, lactose intolerance is much more likely. All right, number two benefit. It helps improve skin health. I know dairy might have a bad reputation when it comes to causing or worsening acne and skin inflammation. But again, this is far from the case with raw milk. As I've said, the benefits of raw milk are numerous, but surprisingly, one of the most common reasons that people consume it is to benefit their skin. Uh, The success stories of people consuming raw milk to improve conditions such as psoriasis, eczema, and acne are very widely reported. You can find a lot of information on that. Now, the benefits are for the following reasons. It contains healthy fats. Raw milk contains large amounts of healthy, saturated fats and omega-3 fats. And it supports skin hydration. It supplies probiotics. Probiotics in raw milk can kill off or balance bad bacteria in your gut. So that's going to dramatically affect the health of your skin. Uh, The research shows that inflammation and unbalanced gut flora contribute to skin issues such as acne and eczema. Unbalanced gut flora. So you want those good probiotics in raw milk. All right, number three. It helps prevent nutrient deficiencies. According to the USDA, nearly 300 calories a day in the average American diet out of a total of an average of 2,076 calories calories can be attributed to added sugars or sweeteners. 
Um, in comparison, nutrient-rich foods like raw dairy, fruits, and vegetables only contribute about 424 calories. Just a little bit more. All that sugar and sweetener, though. Wow. Uh, one serving of raw milk contains about 400 milligrams of calcium, 50 milligrams of magnesium, and 500 milligrams of potassium. And these minerals are vitally important for cellular function, hydration, building bone density, blood circulation, detoxification, muscle health, and metabolism. Magnesium, calcium, potassium. All right, number four. It can be used to make probiotic foods. Probiotics are microorganisms that line your gut and they support nutrient absorption. It's, it's tough when you eat food and it doesn't actually get absorbed. And the benefits don't get absorbed. So you need those probiotics. Um, they, and probiotics also help protect you from foreign invaders like E. coli and parasites. And the best way to include probiotics in your diet is not to take a pill. <laughs> nope, it's not. It's to get them in their most natural state, which includes raw milk products, uh, raw, such as cheese, kefir, and yogurt. Real, raw, and organic probiotic yogurt, cheeses, and kefir have been consumed by some of the healthiest populations living around the world for thousands of years. And some of the disorders probiotic foods are known to help with include diarrhea, inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, skin infections, weakened immune system, urinary tract infections, vaginal yeast infections. So probiotics, no, you don't need to take a pill. You need to eat your probiotics. That's what we've done for centuries. And number five. There's no added sugar or synthetic ingredients in raw milk. In addition to pasteurization, conventional milk also usually goes through the homogenation process. Now, homogenation is a high-pressure process. It breaks down fat into tiny particles. However, a, a fat subjected to high heat and pressure becomes oxidized and rancid. So many low-fat dairy products also have thickening agents added to make up for lost texture. So you're altering it. You're adding things. Lots of them have lots of sugar. Raw milk needs no added thickeners or shelf stabilizers and also doesn't contain added sugars or flavors. Most foods have some levels of natural sugar, including raw dairy, uh, which it has lactose. That's a sugar. Um, but the natural sugar in the dairy is balanced with other nutrients. And so, therefore, not such a concern. It's even healthy for you in moderation. So those are the five benefits. Now let's talk a, a little bit more about the nutrition that is in raw milk. Raw milk is truly one of the most nutrient-dense foods in the world and has a nutrition profile unlike any other food. I understand if you've been cautious in the past about drinking raw milk because of all the negative media it might have earned. Let me help ease your mind. As a species, we have been drinking this luscious, delectable beverage for thousands upon thousands of years. And today, more and more people are drinking raw milk. We are slowly getting back to wholesome, unadulterated food that has served us for a millennia. Over 10 million Americans now drink raw milk on a regular basis. It's available in the grocery store in many states. Not in our state of Virginia. We, we uh, offer herd share, so you own a cow and then you can have raw milk. Uh, when we were in South Carolina, we could buy it in the grocery store. Isn't that crazy? Some places where it's completely outlawed and other places you just go to the grocery store and buy it. <laughs> Nobody's dying. We're not, we don't see people dying in droves. Anyway, the health benefits, healthier skin, hair, and nails, nutrient absorption, stronger immune system, reduced allergies, increased bone density, neurological support, that's the B vitamins, weight loss, eh, some studies say that. you got to be do it in moderation, though. 
Um, it helps build lean muscle mass and better digestion. So what makes it, what are the ingredients that make raw milk such an incredible superfood? Let's take a look at its unique nutritional profile and it, it's going to become clear. All right, so raw milk benefits, the nutritional profile of raw milk, fat soluble vitamins, A, D, and K2. Um, because raw milk comes from cows grazing, I say raw milk comes from, our raw milk comes from cows or goats, not goats, we don't have goats, but they're grazing on grass. Not all raw milk, by the way, comes from cows grazing on grass. Um, it is best. But that, that's that's not always the case. Uh, it, so research has shown that it contains higher levels of heart health, healthy fat soluble vitamins, A, D, and K2. Those are the fat soluble vitamins um, than the milk that comes from factory farm cows. The vitamins support the brain, the nervous system, and they're crucial for development, focus, and brain function. So they're great for kids, growing kids. Fat soluble vitamins also support bone density. And help naturally balance hormones. All right, another uh, nutritional profile. Short chain fatty acids, CLA and omega-3s. So it's high in the anti-inflammatory omega-3 fatty acids. Raw milk from grass-fed animals is a rich source of butyrate, a short chain fatty acid that's widely known to control health issues related to inflammation. Slow metabolism and stress resistance. Additionally, uh, raw grass fed milk is packed with conjugated linolenic acid, CLA. You've probably heard that uh, CLA before, conjugated linolenic acid, which, according to the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, has been tied to cancer prevention, healthier cholesterol levels, and can even help reduce body fat. So that's where we get the body fat. That's from the uh, Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. And I again, I've got a reference in the show notes for that. All right. What kind of minerals and electrolytes do we have? Well, as I mentioned, calcium, magnesium, and potassium. Raw milk is one of the highest sources of minerals and electrolytes of which many people need, especially the calcium and the magnesium. Potassium, it's hard to get a little bit low on that. But the calcium, but yeah, calcium is and magnesium, most people are low in those two nutrients. Uh, what else do we have? We have whey protein and immunoglobulins. By far the best tasting curds and whey protein come from our raw milk. Cheese. Also, whey protein is fantastic for anyone who's looking to burn fat or build or, or retain lean muscle. That's why they sell that powdered stuff. Uh, whey is high in the following enzymes. Alpha lactobumin, beta lactoglobulin, bovine serum albumin, and immunoglobulin. All right. So those of you who are bodybuilders, you probably already knew all that. All right. So we also have probiotics uh, that are available. Kefir, cheese, and yogurt. Probiotics are only found in small amounts in the raw milk, but when you ferment raw milk to make foods like kefir, yogurt, and cheese, the good bacteria dramatically increase. That's what makes the product, is that bacteria increasing and fermenting. Um, in fact, there are no other foods in the world as naturally high in probiotics as cultured dairy products. So this is just a few of the things that, uh, when it comes to raw milk benefits. Now let's take a quick look at raw milk versus conventional milk and compare them. Dairy products have gotten a bad rap over the years, but this is actually mostly due to the pasteurization process. When milk is pasteurized, it destroys many of the nutrients that make raw milk beneficial. Well, why is pasteurization even performed in the first place then? Because it's expo it exposes milk to very high temperatures, it can kill harmful bacteria that are possibly able to make their way into the milk. However, 
As I mentioned before, it's very rare for these types of bacteria to be found in milk to begin with. There are other options to ensure the bacteria doesn't get into the milk in the first place. This is how pasteurization evolved. It's not because the milk is bad. It was because the way that they handled the milk was bad. And so they just cooked it all so that they could get rid of their bad handling practices. Anyway, uh, key nutrients and enzymes are greatly reduced during that pasteurization process. Um, and if you consider the fact that many of these nutrients are not only reduced, but they're altered from their original states, you can understand that some of these nutrients are completely unavailable to your body to, to use, and, and they can be very difficult to digest for many people. They are no longer in their live natural states. Um, allergies and lactose intolerance are higher with pasteurization as well. Uh, Another major negative of pasteurization is that it destroys the digestive enzymes needed to break down and absorb certain nutrients. So this great, great product, all of a sudden, you can't get the nutrition from it. In the previously mentioned study, researchers found lactase, that's the enzyme in dairy, uh, lactase levels are greatly reduced with pasteurization. So that's one explanation as to why People are lactose intolerant. They need lactase. They need the enzyme lactase, and it's destroyed in pasteurization. Um, a survey conducted by the Weston A. Price Foundation found that of 700 families interviewed, amazingly, about 80% of those diagnosed with lactose intolerance stopped having symptoms when they switched to raw milk. 80%. So there's still 20% where, you know, they just can't drink milk. Okay. Okay. 80% they stopped having symptoms when they switched to raw milk. So let's talk about the difference between uh, the nutrients in raw milk and conventional milk that has been pasteurized. So to put things into perspective, according to medical studies, the following nutrients in raw milk are 100% fully active. These are the nutrients in raw milk, and they're 100% fully active. During pasteurization, they are altered or destroyed. Vitamin A, 35% reduction. Vitamin C, 25 to 77% reduction. Vitamin E, 14% reduction. Iron, 66% reduction. Zinc, 70% reduction. B complex vitamins, 38% reduction, calcium, 21% reduction, enzymes, 100% destroyed, immunoglobulins, damaged, whey protein, denatured. So you're taking this perfect nutritional food and reducing its uh, vitamins and minerals. You're reducing its availability of those vitamins and minerals, and you're completely uh uh, damaging the inherent enzyme that allows you to actually digest the product. All of these nutrients that are 100% active in raw unpasteurized milk. So pasteurized milk is a lesser product. As I mentioned earlier, they end up adding stuff to a product that was perfect before pasteurization. It was perfect before pasteurization unless it was contaminated by careless practices. So now I'm going to shamelessly talk about our herd share program. <laughs> In case I've enticed you into wanting uh, to try out this raw milk for yourself. So if you want to have the freedom to consume raw milk in Virginia, you can join our herd share program. Own part of our cow herd and enjoy the benefits that we do every day. During the summer, we have fresh milk, yogurt, butter, and sometimes a bit of cream. And in the winter, we have aged cheese and more butter. The way that it works is that you buy into our herd of dairy cows. We will care for them for you. We will gather the milk uh, benefits for you. We will even process those benefits into fermented products such as yogurt and cheese. For a full share in the herd, it's $60. A half share is $30. That's a one-time fee. And you can also choose multiple shares like one and a half would be $90, two shares, $120, and so on. So how much of the herd do you want to own? Now, once you own part of the herd, then you simply pay us a maintenance or a service and processing fee on a monthly basis and then we'll care for them we'll milk them we'll make the products we'll store the products um, 
And for that service, for a full share, $44 a month, a half is $22 a month, one and a half, $66 per month, two shares is $88 per month, and so on. It's all just in those increments. And what you can expect to receive from your cows is milk and or yogurt and or cheese, sometimes butter and cream. And uh, so if you buy one share of our cow herd, that's equivalent to about um, a gallon. Th those cows will produce about a gallon of milk a week. And that would and then that would make um, sorry, two quarts of yogurt, um, a half pound of butter, uh, let's see, probably once, once we get to cheese, that's going to be a couple of pounds a month. That'll, it'll make a, a couple of pounds a month. So, um, every week then I can let you know what is available. Uh, and especially you give me feedback of what you want, uh, want to have available from your cows as well. And that determines, you know, what I, what I can make for you. And, uh, and you choose how you want to receive it. You're going to choose one item from a full share list, or you can do two items from the half share list. Uh, we milk the cows seasonally, which means that your cows will provide you with milk and yogurt fresh from the first week of May through the last week of October on a weekly basis. And then uh, for the other six months, we will continue to... Uh, care for the cows and we'll store and manage your cheese and butter and you can pick up your share twice monthly at the farmer's market in Withville or from the farm. And that's it. Uh, for more information go to www.peacefulheartfarm.com forward slash Virginia dash herd dash shares. It's on the menu um, and then feel free, free to call or email me with your questions. All right you can enjoy the benefits of that milk. Now, once you get that milk, you might want to know how to make traditional kefir. It's a fermented milk drink similar to a thin yogurt, and it's made from kefir grains. It's a specific type of mesophilic symbiotic culture. Um, and the drink originated in uh, the Caucasus, Eastern Europe, and uh, Russia, and it's prepared by inoculating cow, goat, or sheep milk with the kefir grains. Now, this, the instructions that I'm going to do are for cow's milk kefir. All right. So it's not only easy to make, it's delicious. It's probiotic rich. It is a versatile beverage your family can enjoy. You can flavor it all different kinds of ways. This particular recipe uses the direct starter culture. So you, you do not have to maintain kefir grains. And uh, perhaps you can learn that a little later. I will include that in the recipe. So what you need. Uh, you need some equipment. You need a glass or a plastic container, quart size, uh, plastic wood or stainless steel stirring utensil, coffee filter or cloth, and then that'll be your cover, and then a rubber band to secure that cover uh, over your container. Uh, let's see the ingredients simple a quart of raw cow milk needs to be very fresh don't wait as the competition between beneficial bacteria is quite fierce and uh, then you need a packet of direct set kefir starter culture and you can google it to find a source that you like uh, remember starter culture not the kefir grains and that's because we're using raw milk uh, what to do? Well, we're going to pour the milk into a glass or plastic container. And if the milk is refrigerated, you want to bring it to room temperature, 70 to 75 degrees, add the kefir starting culture, starter culture, and, uh, stir it gently until it's fully dissolved. Then you're going to cover it with the coffee filter or the cloth, secure it with a rubber band, put it in a warm spot, room temperature, warm, 72, 74 degrees, for 12 to 16 hours. Um, and then once it's finished, you're going to cover it with a tight lid and store it in the refrigerator. And you can tell the culturing process is complete when the milk thickens to the consistency of buttermilk or, or heavy cream. 
Now, as I said, you can reculture that. Um, it, it can be recultured, recultured anywhere from two to seven times. Um, the exact number of batches will depend on the freshness of your kefir and your hygienic practices. You know, again, you're dealing with bacteria. And so you, you've got to keep we deal with this with cheese all the time. You want a certain culture. You don't want other cultures in there. So that's uh, when we talk about hygienic practices, that's what we're talking about. Keeping the cultures that we want, keeping the others out. All right. So you want to be sure to reculture within seven days. Um, and that's where you, if you get longer periods between your batches, then, then your result is not going to be quite as successful. So again, you're going to pour a quart of milk into a glass or plastic container and, um, heat it to the room temperature and then you add a quarter cup of the of your prepared kefir from the previous batch and you stir it gently cover the container again uh, 72 to 74 degrees for 12 to 16 hours and again you're covering it uh, with a tight lid and store it in the refrigerator now you have a healthy probiotic drink enjoy my final thoughts, the homestead keeps on keeping on. Things are moving so quickly these days. There are not enough hours in the day to do all the tasks that need doing. This is the name of the game on a homestead. And every once in a while, we stop and smell the roses, so to speak. It's up to us to make that happen. Uh, when you own your, uh, when you have your own homestead, you're fully in charge of your life. And it's a wonderful thing. So you just make choices. And we love our cows. And we love our milk. Um, it's produced from cows that have been grass fed and raised in humane conditions. We drink our milk unpasteurized and it retains all of its natural nutrients and benefits. We make great products for our own use from that. And again, remember the benefits in there include improved Im immunity, healthier skin, reduced allergies, healthier growth and development for children, uh, lower risk of nutrition, nutrient deficiencies, and just so much more. And your mileage may vary. It's everyone's individual. Real milk has been consumed safely for many centuries. And we have a limited number of herd shares available. If you want the benefits I've described here, see me at the Withfield Farmer's Market or come to the farm during our store hours, Tuesdays 10 to 12, Saturdays 3 to 5. Talk with me about your needs and the needs of your family. You can use your wonderful milk to make that kefir and provide even more healthy benefits to your family. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcasts, subscribe, give me a five-star rating and review. I would really love it. Also, please share it with any friends or family who might be interested in this type of content. As always, I'm here to help you taste the traditional touch. Thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace and peace.